All right. I think that we can all agree that the MetaQuest 3 is just an amazing device. Like, I personally use it for PC VR as I have a super high-end custom-built PC that is 4K VR ready. But the MetaQuest 3 is also a standalone VR gaming console, meaning it does not require a powerful computer to VR game like the Valve Index. The Quest 3 has its own game store, and the experience that I have had on the Quest has been very smooth and very snappy. Like, even in PC VR, the wireless air link is just incredible. Yo! <laughs> I'm on top of the truck! The connection has been perfect for me, with little to no stutters or compression pixelation issues, like, at all. The Quest 3 uses the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 mobile chipset. We will get a little bit more into that in just a moment. The pancake lenses are so clear and requires little to like literally absolutely no adjustment to get a perfect picture and focus. As someone who upgraded from the MetaQuest 2 to the MetaQuest 3, the pancake lenses alone literally might be enough for me to recommend you the Quest 3 if you have the Quest 2. It's just like that much of an upgrade. For $500, you are getting a lot for the buck. Not only are you getting a PC VR and standalone VR machine, but you are also getting an amazing retro gaming machine. Now back to the chipset. The MetaQuest 3 uses the Snapdragon XR Gen 2. You might have heard of this manufacturer before, as this is the same manufacturer that supplies the most high-end Android smartphone brands. So this got me thinking, if the OS is using a mobile chipset, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg would have put the effort to implement his own ARM operating system. As it actually turns out, the MetaQuest OS is actually an Android-based operating system. In other words, the MetaQuest 3 is running Android. In theory, if the MetaQuest 3 is running Android, that must mean that the MetaQuest 3 can also open and install APK files. An APK file stands for an Android Package Kit file, which contains app data and information. These are similar to .exe or executable files on Windows. Alright, now that I told you guys a few things, let's get into how to install Dolphin Emulator on your MetaQuest 3. The Quest 3 doesn't exactly give us any file management capabilities from the get-go, so even if we install an APK file, we have no way of opening it and installing it. But, the Quest does have a developer mode. Developer mode allows VR game developers a more complex OS that allows for seeing system files and allows the user to install apps from unknown sources, allowing developers to troubleshoot and test out their games on official Quest hardware. But in our case, we're turning it on to be able to install Dolphin Emulator. So right now, developer mode will not be able to be turned on because you haven't created an organization just yet. But don't worry, this actually really isn't that hard at all. Just takes a few minutes to set up. So what you need to do is go to developer.oculus.com. And from here, you are able to create an organization, but make sure you are logged into the same Facebook account that you are logged into on the Quest. From here, you need to go to My Organization Groupings, and it'll ask you to create a new organization. Once you do this, you have to create a new name for your organization. So, after setting up your new organization account, there is just one more step to enable developer mode. You need to go into the Meta Horizon app on your smartphone and make sure that your Quest is connected to the app. On the top left, click on the Quest icon and then click on the headset settings. From here, you should have a developer mode option. Click that, and then developer mode should be able to be flicked on. After you do this, restart your MetaQuest headset, and you should have a new selection in the settings for developer. Make sure that Enable Custom Settings is enabled. After setting up developer mode, all we have to do now is download the Dolphin APK file. All you need to do is go into your headset and open up the integrated browser in your My Library page. Search up Dolphin Emulator and open the official Dolphin Emulator website. On the top of the page, click on Downloads. From here, find the latest version and then hit Download for Android. I'm not going to download it here because I already have it installed. After you do this, go to the MetaQuest store and install this VR app called Mobile VR Station. Then open the app. From here, choose Configuration Wizard. And then Show All Options. And then Configure Scoped Storage. And then Step 1, Request Access. 
Now, anyone who has an Android phone might be familiar with the screen. This is the file management app that is found on all Android smartphones. From here, go back to the Quest 3's main directory by clicking on Quest 3 on the top left of the window, and then click Downloads. Once you are in Downloads, you are not able to directly click on the APK file to install it, as it says to protect your privacy, please choose another folder. To get around this, all you need to do is click on the little open icon on the top right of the file. When this message pops up, just hit continue. I'm hitting cancel since I have it installed already. There is just one more step we gotta do. Go back to the Quest 3's main directory and then hit create a new folder. And name this folder ROMs. Once you do that, you can close out of this app. You have successfully installed Dolphin Emulator on your MetaQuest 3. To open Dolphin Emulator, all you have to do is go into your library and then click on the third icon of the folder with the question mark on it to see your apps from unknown sources. The Dolphin Emulator should be an option. Alright, great! Now you have Dolphin Emulator installed on your MetaQuest headset. To transfer GameCube ROMs, all you want to do is connect your Quest to your PC where the ROMs reside via a USB-C cable. Once you do this, put on your Quest headset. A prompt should pop up on the screen, asking if you want the computer to have access to the Quest files. You want to click on it, and then the Quest should pop up on your PC as a drive. Once you have access to the Quest's files, locate your ROMs and open them on the side of your screen. Then open your Quest's main directory, and put that on the other side of your screen. In your Quest's files, click on the folder we made, ROMs. Now choose which ROMs you want to transfer. Click and drag these ROMs from your computer to your Quest, and let them transfer. Once you have done this, you are good to go, and you are able to disconnect your Quest from your PC. Once you are back in the Quest 3, open Dolphin Emulator and click on Add Games. Once you click on Add Games, you will see it will open up a window that was similar to the one that we were in before, while we were installing Dolphin. From here, click on that ROMs folder that we made and transferred our ROMs to. You should be able to see your games in this list. If this is the case, all you need to do is click Use This Folder at the bottom of the window. And that's it! You've successfully installed Dolphin Emulator and your games to the app! There is just one more step we need to do before we can get to playing, and that is connecting a wireless Bluetooth controller. Luckily, this is actually the easiest part of this entire installation. And for this setup, I am using the 8-bit Do Wireless Bluetooth Pro controller. After getting your Bluetooth controller, make sure that it is turned on to Bluetooth mode. Mine was actually set to connect to my PC via the dongle that I have plugged into it. Once this is done, open up settings and go to devices. In this Bluetooth window, look for your Bluetooth controller in the Available Device list. After you've done that, your controller should have popped up beneath the Connected Devices list. And that's it! You successfully connected your controller to your Quest headset, and you are ready to play Dolphin Emulator! To configure your Bluetooth controller, click on the cogwheel on the top right corner of the window. Go to GameCube Input, and make sure to select GameCube Controller 1. Make sure that you have your Bluetooth controller selected before assigning control inputs. After you are done configuring your Bluetooth controller, all you need to do is go back to the game select screen and click on a game you want to play. As you can see, the quest perfectly tracks this window, so you can walk around it and it'll be like you're looking in a real window into Super Mario Sunshine. It's actually pretty dope. The audio even corresponds to where the window is. You can even set it to make it look like you dimmed the lights in your room. You can even get up close to the window and inspect Mario's little mustache. There are sometimes these slight stutters, but overall, I've played a few games with this, Luigi's Mansion, Wind Waker, Mario Sunshine, I haven't really noticed any major performance issues at all. And this is running in 1080p. 
You can literally pick up and drag the window wherever you want in your room. It's actually insane. And all you need to do to change games is to exit focus mode, hit the back button, and hit exit emulation. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure to ask me in the comments section, and I will try my best to get to everyone. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and as I always say, stay awesome.